Cassidy Brown. I am the director of marketing here at the University of Maryland. I fell in love with sports when I was really young. I'm the youngest of four. Uh, all of us played sports, specifically soccer. Um, but my oldest sister is nine years older than me. So I think really when I was about three or four and she was seven or eight, um, I was just playing with them in the backyard and loved sports playing. And then as I got a little bit older, I loved still being involved in sports in the capacity of a full-time job. Some key practices, honestly, I mean, it sounds cliche, but teamwork and making sure that everyone's differences are coming together as a whole uh, for the greater good of the group's goals. Um, I think in making sure that everyone's voices are heard. I think the diversity aspect to our teammates, whether that's on a sports team or a work team, um, make it fun and exciting. And I know I'm not the smartest in the room, but if we can get five, 10 people in the room that all share different experiences and different um, outlooks on ways to get to that common goal, I think that's the best way to go about it. We work as a team for everything that we do. Um, and that's why we work as a team, because if I don't want to be by my solo self trying to do something, I'm going to take a little bit of everyone's ideas and workload to make sure that we get to that goal. It's unacceptable. There's, there's quit isn't even in my vocabulary. Um, I think that there's been times where it's challenging and things are really, really tough, whether that is a soccer game or it is a sold out crowd at a Maryland basketball game. And you don't think you have enough time in the day to do what you want to do. Um, there's no such thing as quitting though. I think you might have to alter expectations and alter what you see in the short and long-term uh, results, but there's, that Q word is never said. <laughs> that last part gives me chills. Um, I think people have told me before that I'm very empowering. Um, I think it's crucial for people to work in an environment where they feel like their voice is heard or their idea is actually considered no matter what level. I, I never thought of it as like a huge positive trait that I have, but I'm going to go to interns and I'm going to go to students directly asking for their opinion on what we should do to market to students because they are the students and they're living it day by day. Um, I also don't, I think I approach our athletic, our athletic director in the exact same light. He, I might prepare a little bit more when speaking to him, but I'm gonna give this him the same time that I give our student interns. Um, and same with our like full-time staff that I work with. Uh, I think it's really, really important to empower and make sure that they know that they are just as much as the equation as I am. I think my mom is incredibly strong uh, from, a from a personal level. My mom is really strong. I have two older sisters that are both bosses in their own ways. Um, they're mothers, which is incredible to watch them help grow their daughters and the, my one uh, nephew into these really, really intelligent, sweet, caring, and compassionate little kids. Um, my college coach is a female, uh, Coach Janet Rayfield, and she, that wasn't something I even took into consideration when I was looking at colleges to play at, um, but that to me, she was the first female coach that I've ever had. I always had males growing up with soccer and basketball, and she was just so strong, and she had a really, really amazing balance of demanding respect, but also being relatable. Um, and gosh, I stay in touch with her now. Any any big milestone in my life, I go to her directly for advice, but also just we kind of still to this day um, celebrate each other's victories. So whether it's a successful season with Illinois soccer or 
she is called up to be an assistant coach for the national team. I'm going to congratulate her and I'm going to be there for her if she needs anything from my end. And for me personally, when I got this job here at Maryland, she was one of the first people I told because the things that I learned while playing soccer under her, um, they totally, totally translated and got me to where I am now. I think if you were a fair weather athlete and a fair weather competitor, you would say those are setbacks. Um, but I don't look at those as setbacks at all. When I, so I tore my ACL my freshman year, I was the one of the two freshmen that started tore my ACL two thirds of the way into the season. And truthfully, I was, I think some people would have been devastated. I, I was upset but I more so was like, okay, then this is now my time to sit back and watch the seniors and like totally soak in. I was playing a new position. I was playing defense. I played four in my whole life. So I was taking that time to watch, ask questions on the sideline. Um, I got like a lot stronger in the weight room um, during the off season. Mm -hmm. So that was more of an opportunity for me to really soak in and ask questions and grow as an individual off the field. Um, for COVID, I think from a professional standpoint, it was just a, a wild year. And a lot of people would think that's a setback in, uh, like a, a professional growth aspect of it. But to me, that was like an opportunity for us to figure out, okay, what can we strengthen right now that we have been pushing off? Cause we didn't have the time or we didn't have the energy to, um, really capitalize on these opportunities. So we were able to do that we were able to take some campaigns that we've never done before, such as fan cutouts. We've never had a reason to do fan cutouts and we completely took that in-house, um, built this program from the bottom up, saw it from the launch to the actual execution to the pickup of the cutouts at the end here of the season. Um, and we made like hundred thousand dollars for our pro for our university that we wouldn't have had time or energy to do before. So it really is just getting creative and whatever comes your way, figuring out either like the roundabout way to get to your destination still, or maybe this door is closed for a reason. Let's figure out what opportunities are open from that door being closed. I think pre-COVID-19 people came to sporting events and watch sports on TV as a getaway from their own jobs and their own stressors in life. Now more than ever, I think people are itching to get out and itching to be sitting next to those fans courtside or sitting on the student wall at Maryland basketball games. Um, I anticipate when people are coming back into these live events this uh, fall and winter, that they're gonna be coming back stronger than ever bringing out that Maryland gear that might have a little bit of dust on it um, and going, going hard to make up for the last year that they lost. Um, and truthfully, I want to make sure that we are focusing on like game day from the beginning of the day, they wake up and they put their Maryland polo on to go to work that day because they're going to the game that night. I understand that a lot of like financial strains have been put on people for because of COVID um, and so the fact that we are still getting people interested and in, money might be a little bit tighter, but that because they're going through all of this effort to get to our game, I think we just need to turn it up a little bit more this year and make sure that it's unforgettable and we're grateful for them to spend their extra money and their funds and their time more than anything back at Xfinity Center or at our football stadium. I love it. Um, I think when people comment, just stick to the sport, you're an athlete, just stick to catching touchdowns. It's ridiculous and silly. Um, I think that fans are the ones giving these athletes that platform. And so they should be open ears, willing to hear what they stand for. Um, because backing up even to like college athletes, they, the whole thing is they're student athletes. We don't just, we, we literally never call them just athletes. They're student athletes. There's so much more to the athlete than just 
getting on the field or getting on the court and scoring points. Um, and I think it's really important for people to know that holistically, they are active in communities, they have other talents, they are one of 12 family members and all of those 12 family members have a really cool story that make up this certain student athlete. Um, and I think once they graduate, they don't lose that ability to maintain the more rounded athlete that they are. Um, like I said, the fans are the ones that are providing the platform. And I think it's really only giving them, they, ha they have to be able to listen to them. And if they don't want to listen to them, that's cool. But don't, I, to me, fans don't, I don't think they really need to exert energy on, why don't you just play your sport? I think, I think it's really important for everybody to hear that there are other causes that these athletes and student athletes are going for. It is awesome. It is, it's weird to celebrate this milestone of them being heard because before, when I was in high school, before I really got in the plat, like the area of playing college, and then I had my short stint playing professional as well, I didn't think twice that people weren't actually listening to female athletes. I just, I didn't understand that there is a discrepancy between the male and the female athlete. Now that women are getting heard, it's like, it's about time and it, it, it makes me happy that at the same time there's like the small percentage of me that still is in disbelief that it took so long for that to actually happen. Um, but I truthfully like I tear up when I see that ESPN is talking about Megan Rapino in like the same light as LeBron. Um, I think that's really, really cool. And going back to like my nieces, they, it's really important to me for them to understand that like they should be playing soccer and they should make sure they should. One of my sisters played soccer in college as well. It shouldn't be like a, a huge deal for them to want to be a kicker for a football team or they want to be the manager for a basketball team. Um, I think that these women are using their voice to show these other little women, little girls, uh, that they really can do whatever they want. Um, and I just think that it's about time, but I don't think that there is a, a going to be a ceiling cap on the amount of time and minutes on these huge uh, sport networks that are giving them a little bit more exposure than before. I, once I graduated from the University of Illinois, I wanted to play soccer overseas professionally. Um, and it was like the first time where my mom really wanted me to do something and I wasn't totally bought in. And so literally the first time in my life, I'm like, because she wants me to do it, I don't want to do it. I worked for a year at the University of Illinois um, in our marketing department. And then I was like, you know what? I kind of do want to play again. So after not touching a ball, competitively for like a year and a half, I decided that I was going to get into shape and try out for the professional team, the Chicago Red Stars. So I tried out, made the preseason team, and then was like, a, I signed an amateur contract with them. Um, and I think the challenge of that was when you're younger, you dream of being a professional athlete. Uh, and I kind of was at that level. Like I had one foot in the door going to practice every single day, but then, um, I only got called up for a couple of games. And so when they were playing the games, I was doing marketing for the red stars. So I got to the level where I thought it was going to be like these massive weight rooms and these beautiful fields and meals everywhere. And the weight rooms are unbelievable. Um, but it wasn't like that. And so it was a weird, a weird part to get to the level, like the most elite level that you could besides the national team and understand that the amenities were worse almost than when I was playing in college. Um, so I think the challenge was like expectations weren't necessarily met once I was trying as hard as I could to get to that uh, top level. But like I said before, it was a, a learning opportunity. And I still think that the, like the NWSL, the per, Women's Professional League 
had some room to grow and they are definitely on the rise for that. But it was like, I guess it might be a little bit different challenge than you're asking, but it was challenging to learn that firsthand. Um, but one of my like dreams for their, my upcoming couple of years would be to go back into the professional to NWSL and work on a marketing team or work within the office front office for these teams to make sure that the exposure is adequate for what these girls are doing. Um, because I think that's definitely, like I said, on the rise. And I think it's really, really cool and impactful. You kind of touched on it before, and it wasn't until this last year uh, about the female aspect of working in sports. Um, I think that is really, really powerful because not everyone, there's so many times that I'm sitting in a room with literally 10 to 12 other men and I'm the only female. And to me, I think the legacy that I would like to leave is empowering the females in particular, that they deserve a seat at the table just as much as the 12 other guys that I'm with. Um, and to not get discouraged if like the first opportunity doesn't happen with that. Some people don't end up finding their careers or their groove until a couple of years into their career and there's going to be setbacks. Um, but I think making sure that the females know that they have a seat at the table and then also um, kind of like I said, just empowering. I think being there's a balance between like being friendly and being pleasant to work with or to interact with on a daily basis as a professional, but also empowering others around you to do the best they can and be the best professional, but more importantly, the best person and individual that they could be. Thank you.